Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. Bill, we just talked about a condo crisis, right. not even on the last video. And now what we're talking about is another crisis. And it's a big crisis, probably more important than the condo prices because this affects everybody, especially first time home buyers, everybody, mm -hmm. okay? And what we're gonna be talking about today, I found an interesting article It says, the average house payment is now half of the first time buyer's income. So basically, imagine spending half your income on just housing. Yeah. And I don't see it getting any better, but we're gonna be talking about that today, okay? Okay. It starts off as the potential average monthly housing payment was approximately 3,500 in the second quarter, according to NerdWallet. That sounds about right. 3,500 bucks, okay? I know a lot of people, that's what they make by the time you pay taxes, for, you know, your paycheck and all yeah, that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what they actually that's make. That's what they take home. That's what they take home. Yeah, there's always that disconnect between what people take home and like, oh, well, I make $42,000 a year. Well, not really. You're probably making like 31 by the time it's all said and done. And this is why on a few videos we said, you know, oh, that we're going to become a nation of renters. You know, and I, and I even said, hey, some corporations are going to come in, they're going to buy a lot of units. I know some corporations that built hundreds, if not thousands, of apartment buildings. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. There's apartments going in. The amount of, like, just in our area alone, the amount of apartments that are going in, the luxury apartment townhouse, because now they're building them to be townhouse, rentable townhouses in the apartment building. Mm -hmm. So it's a different layout and a different structure because they understand that there's a need for, you know, the traditional housing unit to be rented. Right. And they can get more in a little space if they do the rent, uh, the you know, the traditional apartment and a, more of a townhouse style. So is, is the day of owning a house, you know, is the day of owning a house over with? No, I don't think so. I, I, I just don't. I think the day of... People going, all right, I got, I got out of, let's say you went to college. I got out of college and I got my first job and okay, great. Now I'm gonna go buy my first house and I'm 21. That's probably a little bit of a far stretch at this point. You know, you might, cause we're starting to see the trend that people have to wait a little bit longer to purchase their first home. But then of course, you know, you know the people that uh, we've worked together on in the deals that they were young, but they wanted to buy their first house when they were young, so they've been saving since they were in high school. You know, but that's that's a those are people are unicorns. I'm sorry. Well, you know, I think maybe the way to, you know, for first time home buyers is, you know, buy the right condo. Don't buy any condo because there's a condo crisis going on there. But maybe buy a two floor condo or three floor, you know, two floor or a townhouse, something, yeah. and then step up to a starter home, and then step up right. to a house. It, what I think happens a lot of times, and it just, even there's been articles and studies and reports on this, mm -hmm. is the first, the younger first time home buyer generation, right. it's, I'm gonna be in this house forever. They all think it's gonna be their forever home and I'm never gonna move. Yeah, that's fine. When we all know that that just doesn't, no. I, that, that's been proven so wrong since, I can probably the time began, but it's not going to be your first house. And if you want to start building wealth, then you do have to make that little stepping stone. You know, things just we can't snap our fingers sometimes and get what we want. Mm -hmm. You know, and it takes a lot of hard work to own a house. It doesn't matter what age you are. It's hard work. Yeah. Period. I mean, it really is. Yeah. And, you know, it's just it's, it's just a shame. It's just, you know, spending you want to enjoy life. You don't want to be locked into, you know, a house, you know, obviously you need, you know, transportation, shelter, yeah. shelter, shelter, food, all the basics. I do understand that, but you don't want to stress because by the time you just paid the mortgage payment and then before you know it, you have to pay another mortgage payment. It's a- Yep, they show up, the bills show up every month, like we've said. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna talk about today. Do me a favor, if you like this kind of content, consider subscribing. It really, really helps the channel and it's greatly appreciated. So let's continue. Oh my God. Okay. You want to start? I just, I just glanced down. I'm sorry. I just okay. glanced down at the something. The housing market, no problem. Oof. The housing market is finally showing early signs of easing for people looking to buy a home.
But first time home buyer prospects have been bleak so far this year. Do you agree with that statement? I do, because right now, as a first time home buyer per se, it's, it's, you're typically older than what we would have seen years ago because of that massive boom that we had in equity gains in the homes. And obviously, salaries didn't keep up with that. So yes, I would agree with that. And it is taking a little bit more time before people can purchase their first okay, home. Okay, let's talk about this one. With starter homes costing $1 million or more in over 200,000 metropolitan, 200, 200, sorry. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> 200 metropolitan areas, the average sale price across the country is reaching 439,000 in the second quarter. Americans searching for their first home are faced at sky high cost. $439,000, the average The cost. average, right. So we've, we're flitch, switching back and forth between average and median um, between these different articles. But so 439,000, the average, that's just taking the average, which I kind of understand. I see the point of the median as well, but it's just gone up so much. It's insane. It's not, you know, I'm lucky because I've owned the house, you know, I actually bought this house when it, the market yep. was crashed. And I still had my other house and I kept my other house so the market went back up and I had this house, you know, when right. the market, you know, bought it when the market crashed. Yep. And then when the market went up, I sold my other house. So I had like a chain event. Yep. You know, <clears throat> and even the properties, you know, yeah. the other ones. I bought them when nobody Everything, wanted them. When nobody wanted them. That's when you buy. And then if you can hold, then you make a lot of money when people do really want them. But you know, kind of hitting this back again, the 439,000. Mm -hmm. Let's just take our area as an example. I can't speak to all the other metro areas and stuff, right. but just in our area, because I can talk on numbers, you know, there's a lot of there's been a switch. So I would foresee that this number is gonna start to shift again because there's been a large shift in, in the building sector, at least, to stop building these larger more expensive properties sure. and starting to build more affordable I'm housing. I'm already noticing that. Yeah, it's 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 shifting tremendously. Just I just saw another community developed out by me and Wesley Chapel, and they're starting in the low 300s. What do you think about the 40-year mortgage? I think that's insane. Do you know China has a 100-year mortgage? It just doesn't make sense to me. Like that doesn't fix our problem right now. But they're like, hey, you need an affordable payment. We're, we're, you know, if Annie and Freddie started doing forty-year mortgages, you it, think that what's going? You think that's going to help the housing market? No, I think that's going to hurt. It's just going to shift everything again. Because listen, if you've got, if you extend that out now, right? You send it out forty years. Mm -hmm. Now you're paying interest on it a lot longer. So right, right, yes. So you're spending more money, and. Yes. How disciplined do you just you think about it while you're watching this video? How disciplined do you think you're going to be to refinance it down to a lower mortgage? If that's even a feasible option for you yeah. to get out of that 40 year note, because we all know you're not going to stay there. So the mindset, I think, would be most likely, well, I'm not going to stay there. So I'm going to keep my payment as low as possible and then I'm going to move on. But you're also paying the majority of your interest up front, so now you are building less equity. What does the average person say? I know it's longer now, but it's eight years now, right? It's, yeah, seven to eight years. Yeah, right. Before it was six years. Now it's eight years. Yeah, it's about it, eight. It, it did increase. Yeah, it's people are just staying in their homes longer, um, and I think that'll start to switch over again too. Here's some interesting stuff. Uh, we're gonna go. We're gonna talk. Stay. Stay till the end. We're gonna talk about the most expensive metro areas. And some of them are ridiculous, but we'll, let's talk about it, what okay. their payments are. <laughs> the potential average monthly housing payment was approximately 3,500, a 49% of the median U.S. income in the first-time homebuyer age group, according to estimates in their world, released Tuesday. Yep. So 3,500, I think, is insane. That payment includes the price of the home, an 8% down payment, and the current mortgage rate, real estate taxes, homeowners insurance, and PMI, private mortgage insurance. A required for mortgage finance with less than 20% down, according to personal finance company. NerdWallet also used the medium household income households ages 25 to 44. But these people, if the if the market goes south, if the market <laughs> goes south, mm -hmm. and they you know these are young people, their families, they want to they they. They have another job opportunity someplace else, you know, divorce or getting married or having kids. I think foreclosures are going to happen. I really do. 
Well, in those circumstances, foreclosures have always happened. You know, there's nothing. I just think it's 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 a tough situation. This is again why that thought of a 40-year mortgage just doesn't make sense. So here's let's let's pick some of these metro areas because I found this really interesting. Nashville, Tennessee, the average monthly payment is four thousand three hundred sixty-three. I'm gonna get in Nashville. Okay, yeah, I can see that. I guess. Yep. But it gets worse, okay? Oh, I can see some of these. But <laughs> San Francisco, I have no idea why somebody would pay this much money in San Francisco. The average list price is over a million dollars, 1.2. The average monthly mortgage payment is 7923 61% of their income. Damn. After that, we have Sacramento, okay, average... You know, monthly payment, actually, it's a little bit cheaper, 5069 but it's still 63% of their income. Look at this one. Los Angeles. The average price is $1.23 million. The estimate monthly payment is 9106 Share of gross monthly income, I don't even know how this is doable. 115%? <laughs> right. That doesn't even make sense. San Diego, seventy eight eighty six. New York City, 63.96. Miami, 44.83. These are ridiculous, ridiculous amounts of money. It's it's just, I I really can't comprehend it. You know, yes, if you're rich or you know you make a lot of money, I could comprehend it. But the average person, I mean, you know a lot of people. I know a lot of people, mm -hmm. and. I'm trying to think how many people I know that could afford these payments and maybe two, two people out of everybody I know. It's hard. It's a lot. I mean, <clears throat> just thinking, you know, if you let's as a, as an individual person, that would be very difficult to do. And you this is we've talked about this in the past. Yeah. You know, that you to, to get in, you're gonna need at least what, hundred and seventeen thousand a year, I think was somewhere around there, hundred and seventeen, hundred and twenty five K a year income to uh, you know, from both parties mm -hmm. total, you know, to kind of start to afford these because this makes sense. You're almost looking like one one owner's entire salary is gonna go to the house. Mm hmm You know, for taxes, mortgage, insurance, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, but you, it's crazy. what about life? You know, just going out to dinner and enjoying yourself, kids, health insurance, car right, insurance. cars. I mean, I just paid my car insurance, and I, I have no accidents, knock on wood. Hey, don't metal. say that out loud, jeez. But yeah, but you know, but I'm just saying, it's just like, my prices went up, I'm like, this is freaking yeah, ridiculous. It's, yeah, don't, don't, it's the, the car insurance thing is another crazy stickler here. I mean, it, it, and it seems to be spreading everywhere, but Florida read, is, is read a crazy Read about one. mixed signals. So let's see what they say about Yeah, that. mixed signals. Mortgage rates declined for the fourth consecutive week last week, which which is true. Um, it's what should have been a positive signal for home buyers. The 30-year fixed rate dropped to 6.44% last week, its lowest level since April of 23, and down more than 80 basis points from a year ago, according to uh, Mortgage Bankers Association. Yeah, but the demand for mortgages went largely unchanged, okay? Well, it, yeah. <laughs> but it did, and even the article says that. Mortgage loan application volume increased just 0.5% on a seasonal adjustment basis from one week earlier. Similar, purchase applications just rose 1% from the week before, were 9% lower than the same week a year ago. Right, so, and I, I kind of would expect this to an extent for a couple of reasons. A, we are in an election year, and while it doesn't have the impact that people think it has, or hopes it has maybe, we do start to see a slowdown. And now comparing where we were 9% lower than the same week last year, which is a good stat. Um, I think that's a, actually a really, really good stat. Because we are in that election year, and I think that everybody's kind of in tuned, perhaps, with the Fed getting ready to potentially drop the interest rates. But, you know, people are confused. They think if the Fed's cut a quarter percent, the mortgage rates will go down a quarter percent. That's not how it works. It doesn't work that way. No. And because you guys are noticing when there is no rate cuts, mortgage rates are still dropping. Right, because we were at 8%. Okay. The mortgage rates haven't been cut. 
but the rates. The Fed have rate hasn't been cut. Yeah, the Fed rate hasn't been cut, but the mortgage is the rates have come down. Yeah, so it doesn't work like that right. over time. It will, but it's not like okay, it's Friday they cut the rate, right? And then Monday the rates are all going to be cheaper. It, it, that's not how it works. No, there's a lot of factors, and then it just the market has to react favorably. And then sometimes just because they cut it a quarter doesn't necessarily mean that there's going to be a reaction because just the fact that they know that the Fed is going to potentially cut it. They you know, might be might tr- might already, panic. It's already reacted, either good or bad. Right, but right now they're saying if the Fed, you know, like this talk, oh, they're going to do a quarter percent, and then they say, oh, they're going to do a half, and now some people are saying they're going to do three quarters. They're not doing three quarters. I would fall over. Listen, if they cut the rate three quarters of a percent, we're in trouble. This is why I don't think they're going to cut it three quarters Because percent. they're saying, they're, it's like them taking a no. megaphone and saying, hey, everybody, we're screwed. It's not going to happen. I, I just don't see that. Maybe there'll be egg on my face, uh, what, in 20 days? Something, I think. Uh, anyway, the next thing. But I, I just don't see that happening for a multitude of reasons. Just it, it's, it's like they've been working so hard to get to that 2% mark, and then they're just going to let the floodgates open. All right, so l- let's talk about, so obviously nobody could afford a house anymore. <laughs> All right? Even me, I have the golden handcuffs on this house because if I sold this house, my taxes would go tremendously. You know, I'm, I'm trying to retire and I couldn't afford it. So I have golden handcuffs. So I'm going to be here for a while. But give me a solution. What? And I, I'm not trying to create a negative video here. I'm trying to be realistic. And I, I want a solution. You're the realtor. Give me a solution. Do you think things are going to get better and i see some realtors you know doing videos saying oh things are great right now things are getting better you know it's going to be easier to buy a house i don't see it and the reason why i don't see it is because some of these houses appreciated Mm -hmm. 50 percent in a short period of time if it was over 10 15 years okay but it was over three years right so just on that say we we traditionally were moving around that two to five percent um equity gains year over year that was kind of the average so that's a nice smooth steady yeah. and then there would be a couple years where it's yeah. down and a couple years where it's up and then we had this little run and we gained like 50 almost 50 percent particularly in our area and that increased the prices tremendously now what everybody seems to be thinking and i just had a conversation today actually where it's going to be oh the bubble's coming and the market's going to crash mm-hmm. i i just maybe it is i don't know i don't think anybody really knows but i've also been hearing that for the last three years and we've been talking about it for like the last three years but do you do you have do you think it's going to get What's the solution? The, the, the solution is not mortgage rates. No. The, the solution, at least in Florida, is prices of homes dropping dramatically. But I just don't see that happening. That's the problem. The, the reason why I don't see it happening is all the people that bought in the last three years, they can't go upside down on these mortgages. You know, they're not going, they owe more money. They'll be negative equity. It's like all these people that freaking bought cars. And they try. I talked to the dealership because my mother's interested in a car. And she, he, the salesperson was telling me today, saying, "Yeah, all these people are coming in with these cars, and they owe like eight thousand dollars more than it's worth." Mm-hmm. I feel like the same thing is going to happen with the houses. Well, yeah, but you only lose. We've talked about this. You only lose the money if you sell the house. But some people are going to have to sell, and some people may have. So to my sell. question to all you guys are: What do you think the solution is? Comment below. Okay. I will reply to it, but what's the solution when it comes to the real estate market and how to save it to make it affordable for everybody? That's today's video. I greatly appreciate it. Do me a favor, comment below, share, and subscribe. It's greatly appreciated. We'll talk to you in the next one. See you on the next video. Bye.